Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I'm, I'm handheld. Look at that, there's my Ultimaker. I've got that Darth Vader head printing on another machine right now. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of busy, so I thought I'd handheld this camera and talk about CES. I still have a bunch of footage from CES, and I know I need to get that out to you guys. So in order to do that, I'm gonna facilitate a, a top five list of the things I saw in the 3D printing area. And then you guys can obviously take a look at that. Let me know if you have any questions about what I saw. Maybe have your own top five list. I don't know, let's see what happens. Well, here we go, and in no particular order. This trip to CES 2017 was made possible in part by my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Behind me, you can see the Raze 3D N2 Plus, and I've had my share of large prints on it. Here's the Benchy that I printed, that's, that's large. And then of course, the Mario Star. <sighs> I had some large prints, but Ray's 3D themselves had some even bigger prints and some really cool big prints to show off at CES. So let's take a look at the big prints Ray's 3D was showing off in their booth at CES. Ray's 3D raised the bar with their booth and the numerous large prints they brought along. It was great to see the full-size Stormtrooper helmet and guitar, but they also showed off some huge geometric shapes and even an interlocking print that felt like a filament blanket. The large building prints were a hit as well, with the Burj Khalifa standing tall above the rest. I'm here in my laundry room, and behind me right here, this is the Flash Forge Creator Pro. This is the first 3D printer that I ever owned. And the reason I talk about this is because at CES, Flash Forge was showing off their new resin-based DLP printer, the Hunter. The Hunter looked really cool. The stuff that it was producing looked really cool. Let's take a look. Flash Forge has entered the resin printing market with the Hunter 3D printer. It's a resin-based DLP machine with a build volume of 120 millimeters by 67.5 millimeters by 150 millimeters. When I saw the machine it wasn't printing, however, they were showing prints from the machine, and the prints looked incredibly good. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about this machine. Sadly, my experience with Delta printers is fairly limited. I've had the CME CNC Orion. I had the Eris for a little bit, and I ended up giving that away along with the Orion. And this Delta printer back here is actually going to be upgraded really soon once the parts come in. The Dagama company had their Neva, I think it was called, a $349 fully assembled, fully functional, fully featured Delta printer at CES. It was one of the favorite things. Let's take a look at it. The Dagama $349 Delta printer stands out as an incredibly low cost, fully featured, fully assembled 3D printer with a build area of 180 millimeters diameter by 200 millimeters tall. Prints from the machine were looking good and it looks like I'll have this machine in to review once it starts shipping. Right here in this corner of my office is my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus and it's by far the largest print volume printer that I own with a print volume of 16 inches on the X, 16 inches on the Y, and 21 inches on the Z or Z. However, Titan Robotics brought themselves a printer called the Cronus that uh, is huge and just puts the G-Max to shame print volume size wise. Uh, Let's take a look. The five gantry Cronus printer was quite a sight to see. It has a 1,956 millimeter by 762 millimeter by 508 millimeter build area and will print any material you can throw at it. Each extruder has a max temp of 380 degrees C and the bed will go all the way to 175 degrees C. It's an incredible machine and I truly hope I get the chance to see it again. Well, here we are in my garage and here's some projects that I still need to work on. Yes, those are beer bottles. But one of the things that you should know is that everything that I print is plastic. I know I can have some metal infused prints with protopasta metallics and color fab infused filaments, but everything is still plastic. Mark Forge has changed that with their Mark Forged Metal X, I think is what it's called, and it can print with a metallic powder that is then sintered and you have a metal piece right from a desktop printer. That's cool, let me show you. The Metal X printer from Mark Forge brings the ability to print with metal to the desktop market. It uses a process called Atom, Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing, and it can scan the part as it prints, ensuring you get the exact dimensional accuracy you need for the part 
on the bed. Well, there we go. Those are the top five things that I really had a chance to see at CES. Uh, Paper Joel and I really had a, a fun time showing you around. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, obviously leave some comments or shoot me an email and I can go further depth into things. Or if you have an alternate list or things that you thought were better, please leave them down in the comments. Right, Joel? That's right. All right, well, thanks for watching. And uh, just like Joel says, as always, high five.